we are going to start. So uh, welcome everyone for attending our third session. So um, what we are, for, for those new here, for, for those who attended the training uh, for the first, first time, um, this is an e-commerce training series, and this is the third session that we have done this. So the first session was about the basics of MMIO e-commerce. Um, we have discussed how to create an e-commerce store, create a product categories. I have explained that the parts, what, what they need to concentrate on when creating an e-commerce store. Um, yeah, for the second session, we have uh, we we have we have dived deeper about the features that can really increase your um, sales average sales uh, value per customer. So what we have discussed was uh, creating tiered pricing, um, creating uh, using the checkout rules. Um, so we, we had a lot of discussion from the last session. I think uh, it went from two, from one hour to two hours. Yeah, two hours. It was a two hour discussion because we, 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 we had a lot of discussion, but it was recorded and we are going to publish it by next week. So for this session, we are going to dive even deeper from the previous because previously we were not able to discuss about um, upsell, upselling creating e-commerce funnels and uh, um, about creating um, custom pages. We were not able to discuss that. So we are going to discuss that um, today. So yeah, um, who are the, who, who, who among you here have attended the previous session? So can you raise your hand up if you were able to attend the pre previous session? Oh yeah, so glad we have Panagiotis. Panagiotis, how how do I how do we pronounce your name, Panagiotis? Yeah, so glad to be glad for you to be back here. So hopefully um, you still retained what we have discussed uh, from the previous. So another one. So yeah, I think this is just one. Uh, maybe other participants will will come in later. So we are going to have a little recap before we actually dive into these the the uh, our last session for the e-commerce training series. All right, so let me go for my dashboard first. Okay, guys, are you seeing now the dashboard, MMIO dashboard? Are you seeing the MMIO dashboard now? Can you respond or can yeah. you confirm? Yeah, we can see it. We can see it, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you for confirming. Um, okay, so previously we were able to discuss how to create a store by going to the e-commerce section, um, creating the, uh, if you create a store, what you need to look out Four was the store alias because if you don't have a custom domain yet, this will be your temporary domain. Um, and then um, the, the target shipping locations, what it was for, it is to restrict um, your shipping location. So if you only want to um, send your products within your country, then you need to restrict your shipping location. Example here. Um, I, my shop or my store, my online store, I want, I want to uh, deliver my products restricted only in the Philippines. So what I get, what I going, what I'm going to do is, um, I'm gonna set my continent to Asia, and then the the target shipping location to to Philippines. So if I do this, um, my ecom store is now restricted to deliver only in the Philippines. So that's the target. What what what's what the uh, purpose of target shipping location settings? So if you want to target all people in the world, then you can just remove all the restrictions here. So example, you only want to target or or you only want to deliver within your within your state. Example in California. So let's say North America, United States, and then California. Okay, so if you do this this setting, North America, United States, California, then you won't or your customer won't be able to order and deliver it uh, to set their shipping 
uh, their shipping address to another state besides California because it is restricted on this specific state. If you want to add multiple states here, you can do so. Just add multiple states here. So you can now, uh, you have restricted your e-commerce store to California, Alabama, and Arkansas, Arkansas only. So yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's, what, uh, that's what the target shipping location does. And yeah, store logo, store fabricon, we have already discussed that. Um, for the FB Messenger marketing, just choose your page, add your Facebook pixel, conversion API access token, and then your SEO settings. Um, just add your SEO settings for better um, SEO discoverability in Google, in Bing. And then if you have already discussed uh, how to set the store currency and what, what payment methods are available, you need to set your payment me uh, payment uh, methods here. Either you are going to accept cash and delivery, manual payment, PayPal, Stripe. For the Philippines, we have a local integration, PayMongo. For Malaysia, we have GCash. And for India, we have RazorPay. And we are going to add more um, payment gateway here per request of the users. So if you have a payment gateway suggestion, just go to roadmap.marketingmaster.io and suggest your um, suggest what integration we are going to add next time. Um, let me just let me just um, excuse me. I'm just going to mute other participants. So please mute your uh, mute your mic. Uh, if you have question. Um, then please, uh, you can. You are free to unmute it and then ask me a question. I will. I will be glad to answer it. But for the meantime, um, as we are discussing, please mute your uh, respective microphones. Okay. So we have another question. A uh, question here. Can we change the restrictions later on? Of course, you can change your restrictions anytime you want. Okay. Just edit your store. Set another. Uh, whatever restrictions you want, shipping location restrictions you want, and then it will be uh, available as as you save your the the changes. Okay, so as we save that, um, uh, the changes that we made will be uh, available. Okay, we have already discussed from the previous session about products, how you can import and export products, what are the type of products. We have variable products. We have um, simple products, we have downloadable products, and we have variable downloadable products. We have already discussed that from the previous section of previous session. Session. We have already discussed um, the categories. So we have already uh, uh, discussed how you can create one. And for the shipping, we have already discussed how to set a shipping. So the purpose of shipping is so that you can charge a specific shipping fee per location, okay? So a shipping fee uh, can be attached to a product so that um, you can, example, that product is heavier than others. So you can charge an extra uh, shipping fee for the, for, the, for the weight, based on the weight of the product by adding um, adding more shipping fee for, for, for that specific product. So yeah, that's what the shipping fee does. We've also discussed the coupons, what, is, what, what it is good for, um, the types of coupons, the percent fixed product, fixed cart, percent on product. So we have already discussed that and how we can better utilize coupons to run our deals. Um, example, how, how to... How to uh, incentivize our users to continue their cart if ever they abandoned their purchase, they were not able to complete their purchase. So we can incentivize them to continue what where they have left um, by adding or by, by creating a coupon and giving it to them. So another uh, discussion we had last time was the checkout settings. We have already discussed this. So for the checkout settings, it's best used or, may, or or one of the use cases of checkout settings is to create a checkout rule for tiered pricing. So example, if the customer buys one to five products, you will give 10% discount. But if the customer buys five to 15 products, 
it will be uh, the 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 discount will be higher you are you are they can receive 10 percent discount but and if they buy 10 products to 20 products of uh of that specific offer then they can get 20 percent uh discount so there's a, a very urgent question here is it being recorded of course we have recorded this we are going to publish this on the uh, maybe next week after we edited the video. So yeah, it is being recorded. So let's continue with our discussion. So rule name, um, what we need to do to create a uh, tiered shipping example is just go to example, tiered pricing for a specific product. Uh, just get the conditions, product and what, what specific product and how many products is this? Example is equal or more than five. And we are going to add more condition and just set it to all conditions are met and then set the same product test variant three the operator is uh, lesser than or equal to, to 10. so if you have this condition um, people who buys a, this specific product our test new variation product three if they buy between uh, uh, they bought five to ten quantity of that specific product then we are going to give them an action. So what is that action? We are going to give them, we are going to subtract 10%, meaning we are going to give them 10% discount. So that's what it means, all right? So that's the one of the uh, use cases of checkout rule. Another use case of checkout rule is uh, convenience fee. If you are going to add a convenience fee whenever, a, 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 whenever the purchase uh, amount is a reach example for every purchase more than two hundred dollars then you are going to add a, a, a convenience fee or whatever a promo or whatever uh, a specific fee or you are going to add a discount so it gets automatically applied the the rule gets automatic gets automatically applied uh, um if the conditions are met, okay? The, the settings that we have set at the checkout rule configurations, if the conditions are met, the the actions gets automatically applied. Um, but with but um, um, if you compare it with coupons, for the coupons, the the coupon code uh, will, will only be applied if the customer enters that coupon code during checkout. But the checkout settings, it will get, it, it, it gets automatically applied whenever a condition is met, all right? So we have also discussed the, the SHEP notifications, what, it's, what it is used for. So it is used for sending notification for every new order. So who gets to receive this notification? Well, we have two receivers, the admin, we have two types of notification which presents two receivers. The first receiver is the customer, they will receive the notification of their order or the order conf confirmation via email. Messenger and um, SMS. We also have um, a shop admin notification where the store owner or, or the yeah the store owner will be notified whenever a new order is made on their store. So it's not only restricted restricted to a new order. You can even add more event types here. Just add a new notifications. We have a lot of event types here. So these are the event types that can be added rejected event types so whenever an order is rejected if you reject an order um, you can send a notification to your customer that hey your order has been rejected because of these region reasons blah 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 so another is for processing so whenever an order was a, the status of an order becomes processing meaning the order has been paid already then you can send a order notification so you can compose what type of message you are going to send to your customer per notification by editing the message type here. So we also have a delivered or completed or canceled event types. Um, previously, the most notable here is the abandoned event type. So the abandoned event type gets triggered whenever the customer did not push through with the order. So example, they went to your e-commerce store and they, they, they added to cart a certain product and then they, ha they are already on the checkout page. They have added their name, they, are, they have added their email, phone number on the checkout field. But unfortunately, 
they were not able to complete the order, maybe because life got in the way. Or maybe their wife called them, hey, John, stop what you're doing. Help me out here with the dishes. So that's why John was not able to complete the purchase. So there are a lot of reasons why a, a customer um, who is about to buy something from your store was not able to complete the purchase. So that's why we are going to send them an abandoned campaign or abandoned recovery campaign via email, SMS, just to check out with them that, hey, hey, John, we think you forgot something. So maybe you have already experienced this when you are shopping in Amazon and you were not able to complete your purchase. You, suddenly you receive an email, um, hey, John, you forgot something. Um, and then if you click that link, it takes you back to the checkout page where you left off so that so that you wouldn't have to add to cart that same product again. You wouldn't have to, to enter again those fields that you have previously set up already. Example, you don't have to enter your name again, the, the phone number, the email, because it will be automatically pre-filled so that the customer will just be uh, taken back to where they left and then they can just continue. So that's the whole purpose of setting um, an event type notification or shop notification for abandoned event time. So um, uh, one of the best use case for this feature is to create an abandoned recovery campaigns. So you can add, you can choose to send a single SMS, single single email, or a single message messenger. But for abandoned notification campaigns, it's, it is best for you to send a sequence of messages here. Example, sequence of messenger messenger messages. Okay, send, send, send a sequence of messages in messenger, or you can send a sequence of emails, email one after three hours, email number two, after eight hours, email reminder number three. So you can you can add multiple emails here to, to, to remind them um, about their purchase. And um, the more you send messages, uh, within 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 24 hours after they abandoned their order, you are most likely going to recover that supposedly lost sale. So yeah, we have already discussed that. Um, what we are not what we were not able to discuss last time was the shop designer feature, the funnels, and the shop pages. So that's why um, we are going to concentrate on this um, three features today. And um, the great thing about here is these three features are really connected. They are interconnected, okay? They, uh, they use the same interface. Okay, so let's go to um, the, let's go first to the shop designer pages, okay? So what does the shop designer pages accomplish or what is this feature for? Let me just go back to our e-commerce store. I will activate, um, let me activate a, a, an e-commerce store here. Okay, how about this? I'm going to activate this, okay? So by the way, um, you can add a lot of uh, e-commerce store here. Um, if you want to edit something, you are just going to activate it here. Okay, so once we have activated that, uh, we can go back to Shop Designer. By the way, you can activate it anywhere in the page. Um, you can activate a shop here whenever you want. So yeah, so in this example, I want to edit. So the Shop Designer feature is basically used to, to design your front page, your e-commerce store front page. So example, I want to use this type of header. So if I do that, as you can see, the header automatically gets changed, all right? So that's the preview of what it looks like if we change the header into uh, that certain type of header. Example, if we remove transparency, then it will become that that type, no, right? So um, example, if we change the light, the color mode to, to light mode from dark mode, then it gets changed like this. So you will see the changes in real time here uh, so that you can assess which, which type of design you want for your store. So you can preview in tablet. You can also preview in mobile um, so that you can get a better feel of what your e-commerce store would look like across all devices, ac across all common devices. So example, um, 
I want to add or I want to uh, change the home page and I have other home pages here that I have created. So if I, if I want to change a home page, I'm just going to select what shop body I'm going to use for this specific store, the Blue Wow store. So example, I'm going to use this. If I use that, it will automatically get changed, right? It really depends um, what type of um, page you are going to use for your home page. Yeah. So um, I'm going to teach you later on how you can create a, a, a home page or uh, how you can design a page. Um, and also, um, I'm going to teach you how you can best utilize our existing templates. So let's get it back to tech and gadget because that is uh, the, the page that we used previously. Anyway, before that, um, other, uh, other, other setting that you can set on the shop designer feature is, that, is the shop menu settings. So here you can add pages to your menu. You can remove and add pages with a simple drag and drop. So example, I want to remove uh, my shop page here. So in this case, only the home page remains. So if I visit my um, my e-commerce store here, um, we should see that the, the page or the yeah, if we go to the menu, it's only one here. Home, uh, the home link. Uh, that's that's the only uh, link that remained because we have removed all pages here. But if I want to add pages, what I'm going to do is just drag and drop the pages from, from pages to your header menu. So categories, cart, I'm going to add it here. And then I am going to add home, shop, cart. So by the way, the pages here, you can create your custom page. Example, I created a terms of service custom page. You can add it here on your menu. So it's really that easy. So after doing that, all you have to do is just refresh your e-commerce store and the changes gets uh, automatically applied. Just like that, um, your menu um, has been updated. So no need to click save um, for the sh when, when you're setting your shop menu setting. So let's go to the shop pages, by the way. Oh uh, no, let me show you first from, from shop designer, um, from shop designer going to the, uh, going to the, 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 the um, page editing section. So you can also um, edit your page here. So once you have selected your effective um, front, a, front, front page, um, you can click edit page so that you are going to be, so that you are uh, going to be redirected here. Okay, let me, let me just uh, refresh my, my uh, screen. Okay. Okay. Let's just wait until the screen refreshes. So by the way, guys, who among you here have already created their e-commerce store? Have you already created your e-commerce store? Has anyone started yet using MMIO? Nobody started using it yet. So, um, you are all lifetime deal owners here, so um, hopefully you can you can start uh, you know creating a store, uh, playing around with marketing master IO. You have a lot of stuff that you can do um, that can really add value for your business. And yeah, so let's get to it. Let's go back to Shop Designer. And once here. Um, Let's just wait for it to be loaded first. E-commerce shop designer, activate your uh, e-commerce store. My internet is not working really well. So let me let me go back here. Let me check if the e-commerce store has, al has already been loaded. All right, so it's now loaded. So let me select the e-commerce store that we we previously discussed the blue wow so as i was discussing you can edit your page here click edit page 
and you will be redirected to the editing page section. So once here, you can change the, uh, the style, um, the, the, the button, the color of the button. Um, basically, you can create a whole landing page um, using this. And if you save, that, cha that change will automatically get applied. This example, new arrivals every day. If I edit this, um, let's say I'm going to add double exclamation mark here. So I have added double exclamation mark. And if I save this and then refresh our e-commerce store homepage, let me go back to the homepage first and then refresh. As you can see, it gets automatically applied. Uh, that's how easy it is to edit your e-commerce store front page. And that's the purpose of the page builder editor. So um, it's really simple. Uh, it's really simple to uh, use the, the shop designer. So just remember, whenever you created a page or whenever you created, um, whenever you created uh, your custom page and you want that specific custom page to be applied as the front page of your e-commerce store, all you have to do is just go to the shop designer feature. All right. So the shop designer feature is your go to whenever you want something change or you want to change the style of your e commerce store, particularly the front page. So that's the purpose of the shop designer. So let's go back to the shop pages. I'm going to show you, or I'm going, going to teach you how you can create um, a, a, an e commerce store homepage or how you can design your e-commerce or landing page. By the way, guys, we have uh, a theme templates here that you can use. What you can do if you are using a template is you can just, um, you can replace the images here or you can copy the pattern that is shown on the template so that you can create or you can easily build your own. You can basically just get the idea here and then build it as your own. Or what you can do is just just replace the background images, the text, the colors, and uh, design it according to your brand. Okay, so yeah. But for, for this lesson, I'm going to show you what if we are going to start from scratch, how are we best going to uh, create a landing page here? So to create your e-commerce store landing page, you need a new, uh, you need to create a new page. page. So go to e-commerce. And then go to shop shop pages and once you are here click add new page um, at first you are going to be uh, faced with this this is a basic blank store all right i, I mean a ba basic blank row so the the way the designer is built is it is divided into three parts so let me just get paint here so that you can better understand um, the structure of the the e-commerce store. So, guys, are you seeing now the blank blank whiteboard or the Microsoft Paint? I opened the Microsoft Paint here. Are you seeing it now? Can you confirm if what you're saying? Yes, what you're seeing we can is, see it. We can okay. see it. Yeah. Thank you for confirming. So, the way it is designed is uh, you need to think of it in a structural way. It is a structure. So to structure your page, uh, you need to know what the building blocks are. So the first building block is what we call the row. So this is the row. And inside the row, you should place a column. So row is the the, 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 the overall or the placeholder or the, the building block. The row controls the width and the basically the, this is what the the row element controls the height the row controls the height and also the row can control the width but um, basically I, I just use row to control the height so um, for uh, j just for simplicity, um, I want you to remember that whenever you want to create a, uh, if, if ever want, you want to adjust the height, just go for row settings, adjust the row settings. So yeah, 
I'm just gonna remove this for simplicity. For simplicity, although the row can be, although you can set the uh, width using the row element, I want you to concentrate on the height. So row, uh, in my case, I basically really use row to control the height. So inside the row, there is what we call the columns. You are going to place columns inside the row and not the other way around. But there are cases when you want that. But before you are going to go to advanced, advanced applications, um, first, let's understand that um, the column should be placed inside the row. So uh, go here, column, also here, column. OK, and now inside the column, we are going to add the content. OK, so this is the structure. Okay, content is placed inside the column and the column will be placed inside the row. So yeah, just, just bear that in mind and keep the structure um, uh, and follow the structure as much as possible. So later on, when I, when I teach you how to build the page, um, remember how, you, how, how this is structured. Um, wait, guys, I just need to uh, uh, get something sorted out. Can we take a simple five minute, take a five minute break? Can we, can we take a, uh, a five minute yeah, break? Let's, yeah, let's go. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. I, I just need to get something sorted out. Um, we will be back. Just, just go, go ahead, go. Uh, um, restroom or drink water or whatever. We'll be back in five minutes. Okay, thank you. Hello, hello, guys. Yeah, we can Sorry. hear you. you. You didn't pause the recording. I was trying to tell you before you got out. You didn't. Sorry. You didn't pause it. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, sorry about that. Okay. Let's just add those people who are on the waiting room. Okay, hi, Mr. Thong. So we have here uh, Mr. Uh, Thong. So he is our MMI representative in, in Malaysia. How are you? So let's get it back. Let's get back to where we uh, left off. So again, as I was saying, um, this is the structure whenever you create uh, a, a, a custom page. So we have a row, a column, and a content. So um, the, the row is the overall wrapper. It acts as a wrapper. It, it wraps everything up. And then we have a column. So column uh, is inside the row, and the content is inside the column. So what the column do, does is um, it will populate the row horizontally, all right? Uh, this is how it was designed. And uh, the content can populate the column vertically, all right? So this is what I mean by that. So, hey, sorry. Yeah, so the content can populate the column vertically. And the column can, can populate the row horizontally, just like that, all right? So I'm going to show you now how it does, how, how it works. So let me remove first the, the, the starting row, OK? So let's first add a row. So we have a row blocks here, one column row, or two equal columns, two columns to the big left, then two columns with big right, three equal columns, and so on and so forth. Let me just add a. Um, by the way, I want to recreate just the simple one. I think I want to recreate the coffee. 
I want to recreate the coffee for you guys. Resto Cafe. Resto Cafe that marketing master that I the IO dot net. Let's add HTTPS here. HTTPS. All right. Let me show you that I am sharing the correct screen. Okay, so I am sharing the correct screen here. So I'm gonna I'm going to recreate this. So how did I create the Resto Cafe or the 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 the, the this landing page? So it's really easy. First is let's create a column here, and then so we now have. A, a, two elements, one row, and at, inside that row, we have the column. So as you can see, whenever we highlight something, uh, we ever, whenever we hover our, uh, our mouse on the page map element, the corresponding element on the preview um, here on the right side gets highlighted. So, so the, here's how you can delete an element. You can just uh, click the delete button here and it gets deleted. That's how you delete it. And if you want to duplicate, just just uh, hover over your mouse to the uh, element that you want to duplicate. Example, if you du duplicate the row, all the contents inside that row gets duplicated as well. Oops, duplicate. Just like that. Um, I'm sorry, uh, I, was, I duplicated the column instead. Okay, for the row, if we want to duplicate, yeah, so the row gets duplicated along with the content. You can also duplicate the row using the duplicate button here. So if I delete it here, I can click duplicate and it, it gets duplicated here. Just like that, it gets duplicated. So that's how you duplicate. And if you want to edit something, if you want to edit this, uh, the settings of this specific row, just click the edit uh, icon here. And it, it will it will get edited. It it will the edit section will appear. You can also click it in here, um, so that the edit section appears. And then for the edit section of the row, you can see the what what you are currently editing here. So currently we are do, we are editing the row configuration here. So we can edit the the children arrangement per device, row height, row width, uh, max width, max height. The, the the divider row divider the the margin padding and the background so we can use uh, background color or we can use background image background URL so those are the settings that we are going to use in creating this okay so I'm not going to really recreate all of this I'm gonna use other images as well so that you can you can uh, find images or you can find out how I added the images here. So let's edit the row here. Okay, for the row, I want the height to be equal to the screen height. So if you know a little bit of CSS, you can just add 100 viewport height here, VH. So I'm gonna show it on the screen or just check out your chat. You can copy this code snippet. You can copy this code snippet. By the way, guys, can you hear me clearly? Can you hear me? Hello? Is my voice clear? Hello, guys? Yes, we, we can, can hear you very clearly. All right, good. thank you, thank you. So, so this is the snippet code. Yeah, 100 VH important, okay? So this code, we are going to use this so that the screen or the row, uh, expands to the height of the screen, current screen. Example, if the device is on mobile, it will take up all the screen height of your mobile device. If your device is in laptop, it will take up the whole screen width. So I'm gonna use the mean height here, minimum height to 100 VH or viewport height. That's the meaning of VH, by the way. So VH is equal to viewport height viewport height. So if you are unsure how you can do this, we have what we call a pre-built blocks. You can just use our pre-built blocks here. Yeah. So um, the pre-built blocks, um, oops, there's something wrong with the images here. 
I need I think I need to check what is wrong with Amy, but it will work. Example, if you select the uh, this type of block, um, it will it will regen it it will get regenerated here. So all, all you have to do is just edit the background, the check the 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 shop page. So that's how it uh, it it works. So let's move on. So we now have uh, we have already edited the the row here viewport height, and what we can do is we can add the background image. So usually the images are uh, the, the the images that I use here are added on the row level. So the row level the the background image that is set on the row level gets applied to the whole row. So this is the whole section. This is the whole row. So if I add an image here, so by the way, it's really easy to add an image. We have you can search for free images here. Example, I'm gonna search for coffee here. Search for coffee, and yeah, that's how it uh, works. All the images here will will appear, and all you have to do is just choose what you want to add as your background image. You can load for more here until you're satisfied with a specific background. So I think I want this. This this could work, this image. Or maybe I can use another image here. Yeah, I think this could work. This type of background will work. And then we have already a background image. So we have a row, we have a column. Um, what we don't have is, is a content. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to add a content here. I'm going to click this, and I am going to add a text element. So the text element gets transported here at the top. So I want the text element to be in the center. So to do that, I will edit the column. So just edit the column here, the column. And then we are going to the, 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 the content alignment of the column. We are going to set it to middle. All right, so as you can see, it is now in the middle and I am going to edit this. Um, start a day with coffee, start a day with coffee. So I'm gonna use this. So this is our text currently. So you can edit the color and the, the, the font of the text here. All right, so example, uh, start a day with coffee. So this is our current design. I want to change this to another font. So you can basically add whatever font you want as long as that font is in, uh, is, is a Google font, all right? So go to Google fonts. You can search for any Google font that you want. For example, search for Google font here. So um, let's find a, 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 a good font for this. Okay, just let, let's wait for the Google fonts to load. Oops, something went wrong. I'm just gonna reload Google fonts. Let's say I'm gonna search for another, for a font here, Passion One. I think that's a good, this is a good font. We can use this. Okay, so once you have selected a font, what you can do is uh, just copy the name. Example: You want this font. You want this font to be your, to be to be to be used for your um, for your headline. Okay, you can copy the font name. Go back to MMIO. Highlight where you want to add the font, and then go to Font Family, and then enter the font name here. So just paste the font name, and the font will automatically um, gets uh, will be applied. So just enter the font name, and or if you want, you we have a choices of fonts here which you can select from. And if the font that you want isn't available on the choice, you can just copy the name like what we did here. Copy the name and paste it on the field, and then that font will 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 be automatically applied, just like this one. So I want to add a button here. So to add a button, just click add content here and then add a button. So that's how you add a button. So as you can see, the button right here is not centered. So I want to make this button at the center. Uh, I want to make this cent button center aligned. So I'm going to edit this button. 
I'm going to edit that button and we have a configuration here. Um, the content alignment, okay? So content alignment, this is content alignment on the horizontal aspect. So I'm gonna set it to center. And now the button is centered. So I'm gonna change the, uh, how about the, instead of click me, I'm gonna say shop now. And then I'm gonna set it to bold. Uh, and then um, let's change the font size to 28 or just, yeah, 28 is good enough. And then, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. That's looking really well. What I need to do now is change the color of the, of the button. So I'm just going to edit here, the button, and then wait for button, preset button color here. By the way, I'm going to add more choices for the button colors here where you can customize the color of the button. But for now, since that feature is not yet released, we have choices here. I'm going to set the button color to be white. Button type field, button size large. Oops, the button, the, the font color, we, we need to set the font color to be, I think this is a good font color. So just, just select your, your, your font and then just highlight what font color that you want in here. So I think I'm going to use this one. Yeah, it now looks uh, better. Um, for this one, we can add a, we can add a, a font background here. Okay, let's add a font background for this as well. And then we can set it. We can set the font background um, um, intensity, color intensity, color intensity. Yeah, that's that's pretty well, uh, pretty good uh, looking, better better than it was before. So uh, maybe I can use a better font or a better uh typography here but yeah just just to make our time shorter i i won't spend too much time you know meticulously designing this i'm just going to show you how it is done and what settings are there uh, how how you can play uh the settings that is available so yeah just just go ahead go ahead and play around with the settings in here so by the way i want for the shop now button here i want people to be redirected to the shop page whenever they click the shop now button so i need to use the uh, redirect setting here so for the redirect setting i'm gonna choose shop okay i can also add a custom url if i want to redirect um, our customers to a third party website example you have a third party website where you if the customer clicks that button they will be redirected in there then you can enable the custom URL. But if you want to read to the, the customer to be redirected only within your e-commerce store, then just disable this and then you can select um, the pages in here. So these are all internal pages um, and available pages where you can uh, redirect your customers to. So I want the customer to be redirected to my shop page. So that's why I'm going to set it to shop. Okay, now let's uh, go to the second setting. So the second setting here is this one. Um, the second setting is actually involves two columns. Each column has a different background. So yeah, let's do that. How, how do we add that? So let's first add a, 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 a row, okay? Let's first add a row and we have two equal columns for the row. Okay, so we now have row with two equal columns. Um, we need to edit this row. Okay. So for the row, um, I'm just going to remove this. Okay. For the row settings, um, Let's first make sure that uh, since we have two columns, we need to display two columns in desktop. So we have here a configuration, a ch children per device configuration. So we want our page uh, to be uh, mobile optimized or mobile friendly. Um, so, or we want it to be flexible, all right? So what we want to do is 
whenever the user access the our website using using tablet or laptop i want the column to be uh, displayed side by side but whenever the customer um uh visits our page using mobile i want my column to be vertically aligned so how do i do that you can do that by setting the desktop setting so how many columns to display when on desktop so i'm going to add two so since we have two columns here on the on, on the second row i want to display two desktop i uh, two 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 columns on the desktop and two two columns also on the tablet but on mobile i want to display only one column so that the column gets um, vertically aligned so i'm gonna leave it as one so by the way I, I am referring to this setting all right so tablet is two desktop is two all right and then for the row height i want the row height to be um oops let's let's get back here where's the cafe i want the row height to be i think this is um 30 percent or 50 percent of the viewport height yeah so 50 percent of the viewport height so i'm gonna edit our row so, so what this row does is it occupies 50 percent of the screen all right it will occupy 50 percent of the screen so if you set 100 viewport height it will occupy 100 percent of the screen but this row i want it to occupy only 50 percent of the screen so i'm gonna set row mean height and then 50 viewport height important okay and then i'm gonna add um the background for each of the row so since on this setting we have two different um background per column so the background image should, should be set not on the row instead set set it in the column and the column settings so what we need to do first is remove the i will remove all the mar margins here because there is a, 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 a default margin and padding here. I want to remove it so that it's, it's, uh, it, it will not enter, uh, it, it will not have white spaces. It will, it will, uh, it will um, fit with the, without the white spaces. That's why we are going to remove the margin, the default margin and the default um, column here. Okay, so default margin and default padding has been removed for both of the columns. What we need to do is add a background image for each of the column. So let me edit this column and then search for another image here. So let's search for coffee. Let's search for coffee. And then we are going to find two similar images. Um, yeah. I think this image fits well. Yeah, I think that's good. And what we need to do is another image here. For the second settings, we are going to edit the second row, a uh, second column. So let's search for another image here that that we think would fit best. So it's really up to your dis design, you know, uh, design aptitude, uh, how you are going to design this um yeah uh, i admit it requires it requires a little bit of skill you know you have an eye if you have an eye for design you need to spot what images is good for this example this one okay so this is a pretty good image so it, it fits well so what we need to do next is add our styles so as you can see on the first image it is lighter than the second image so the text here of the first image should be darker and the text on the other side should be lighter, but there is a workaround. We could just use what we call background highlighters. So let me add a content here. So for the content, it is uh, 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 by default, it is aligned at the top. So let me align the content. Um, I will align the content um, center in the middle, okay? So it is now aligned in the middle. And then let's add Express Ca Espresso Cafe here. Okay. And then we are going to add a button. And then we are going to center, align the bottom. Shop now, bold. 
center align, center align, okay, center align. Okay, so it is now center aligned. I then change the color to white. And after that, change the color to uh, be, be style to line. Okay, that's good. So it is now a line type button. Color is white. And then I think it's better if we add a little highlighter here or a text highlighter. So add a background color, black, and then make the the opacity or the transparency of our background to be a little uh, a little to be in the middle so yeah i think that's better and then i think the font the size of the font needs to be bigger so let's use 26 pixels yeah i think that's better for this one as well um, i think we can just duplicate the button just duplicate the button and place it in here and then for the Espresso Cafe, I, I want to duplicate this as well and place it at the top. Okay, now since uh, I want I want the content to be in the middle, so I'm going to edit the, the content and then from top, set it to middle. All right, now that looks better. I just need to change the text to collection new instead of Espresso Cafe. Collection, collection, oops, collection new. All right, collection new shop now. So yeah, that's 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 how that's how to edit, uh, how to quickly edit. And for this one, this is just a simple uh, content. All right, so. Um, for the third row, this is a simple content, uh, a simple, uh, just add a row here, 